down all your <laughs>welcome to tunnel here is episode number 170 wow doesn't even say it on the screen for some reason that's a lot of episodes <laughs> uh <tonight> yeah <laughs> we've got may have a patch that has gone live with some nerfs in the mix and of course her release hgc week three wrapped up and uh, the lunar festival's gone live as well but we also have our first time with arcaner joining us dunk train got pneumonia or something influenza into pneumonia he's he's been sick for a full week he's feeling better but not 100 percent yet and of course bakery's here with me bakery what's good man not much not much you know just chilling uh play some hairs today did some work today and in enjoy myself a lot actually <clears throat> Nice, nice. Well, Arcaner, welcome to the show. We, you know, I and Bakery know a lot about you. you. You're a man that has made many sacrifices for your Heroes of the Storm career, moving very far from, from I assume, ANZ is your original home. And yep. now you're in the UK. So tell me about your journey. Tell me about the beginning. You entered Heroes of the Storm as an ANZ player. Let's begin. Yep, so... <clears throat> It was around early 2016 where I started playing, started to play competitively in ANZ. And I did that for probably close to a year. And then like when BlizzCon was approaching, I got picked up into a team called Reborn. And that was uh, pretty much the start of Team Nomia. And we played at BlizzCon, we didn't do too great. Made some roster changes. And then 2017, I played in Nomia. Um, and then, uh, coming towards the second Western clash, which was, um, in Ukraine, mm -hmm. I decided that I wanted to move and pretty much that was after Blizzard made uh, changes to the rules and they pretty much allowed players from minor regions who didn't compete in HGC to move without region restriction. Um, so when that announcement was made, I decided I wanted to pursue this career. And to do that, I had to move. I couldn't do it in Australia. So, yeah, pretty much I announced that I was going to move before the Western Clash. And then after it, I left Nomia and prepared. And, yeah, here I am. Uh, got picked up by Method. And I'm playing my first season of EEHTC. And it's great. So when, when you made that jump to go all the way to the UK, did you expect to be picked up for Phase 1 of 2018? Yep. So okay. that was my main intention. I didn't want to <laughs> play in the open division. Uh, if I thought I wasn't good enough to get straight into HTC and I would have to play in the open division, I wouldn't have made the sacrifice because it would have just been too much of a financial risk to right. live in the UK for so long without an income. So I had the intention and expectation to pretty much get recruited straight into HTC. And I think I made that happen through a lot of hard work. I played Hero League an insane amount. I played it a lot more than the other professionals that were playing, and I think that's one of the main reasons why I stood out. You hear that, guys? Grind you hear The legendary games. grinder, dude. <laughs> I think at one point, um, I looked at the leader, but Arcane is on, like, double, like, the rest of the top five in the games. It's like, wow, <laughs> like, what's going on? <laughs> yep. The only player, I think players that really, like, challenge me to play more is snitch and poke they play a lot as well mm, yeah they do first question i have for you do you miss your mustache no <laughs> of course we had to bring that up yes i definitely <laughs> missed it i looked absolutely terrible <laughs> who wouldn't terrible. want to look that bad i mean <laughs> you know I, i'm doing i'm doing some weird things with face you had today but you you did a lot weirder things yeah I experimented. <laughs> I think it's a good look. We get this on the screen a few it times. It's terrible. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I think let's move on as fast as possible. 
Yeah. Right. Why is it okay. still on the HCC website, by the way? Did, did oh, they not the take worst. new photos? Yeah. So. yeah, they did. It's just they obviously like that photo. They want to keep it up. <laughs> How do they not have a photo of Ethereum? It just blows my mind. Like He's been in the HCC <laughs> like about eight or nine months now, I think. He's played in a BlizzCon. You know, he's he's been around. The stream crashed at this point of the podcast, and then I was muted for a little while, but it will normalize in just a moment. Hang in there. We're still muted. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is where I would have asked Arcaner if he thought he would have landed a team with a sponsor as prestigious as Method. Uh, definitely not. I think um, it's actually quite a surprise to me that I get to work with such a large organization in my first split. Um, yeah, I was pretty much expecting no org for a while, work hard, and then eventually get that sort of achievement. Well said, buddy. This is where I will finally realize that I have been muted for an extended period of time and things will go back to normal for the rest of the show. <sighs> Um, so you have two losses. Uh, so right now you're kind of even with Liquid. Uh, there's a lot of other teams that can still like, oh, they're still like pretty close to you. But your two losses are to Fnatic and uh, Dig, and you have a three yep. over Liquid. So, like, <clears throat> how do you feel about your position, basically? Like, how um, how sure are you about going to Western Clash? I think we're pretty confident in going to the Clash. Um, we would have really liked to have beaten Fnatic, and I think we could have if we played a little bit better on the day. Um, but I think it's fine that we lost. Uh, better to lose now than at the clash against them. So I think, yeah, top three, like we're really happy with that sort of result. Um, but moving forward, I think we really want to be aiming for the second position. But yeah, I'm really happy so far. Especially since we had such a dominant weekend. I mm -hmm. mean, how could you not be happy going 6-0 and on a weekend against some <laughs> of your, your closer competition? You know, Liquid being a big one, Zealot's another team that you, you're you knocking them down a peg, securing yourselves nicely in that third place spot. The only teams that have beaten you are 1-2, and two, Fnatic and Dig, who have been at the top for a year plus now. I think that's an amazing start to the season. Uh, and I'm, I'm pumped to see, again, like I said, Method joining the scene is, is awesome. It's, I'm really excited about that personally. But to have you come over from A and Z and immediately uh, you just snap up some big wins with your team is is great. Now, Robodoba, your your A and Z counterpart, followed you across the world to haunt you and chase you and try to steal your ladder points. Um, I mean, did you expect him to a make the similar move and b find a team here in HGC Pro League? Uh. I think I did expect him. Uh, well, firstly, like I asked him, I was like, hey, I'm moving. it will be a lot easier if uh, like I had someone to live with and I can like think of a better person. Um, I knew that Rob wanted to pursue HOTS. Um, he was very competitive and very motivated. So I thought it was a great opportunity for him to, you know, try and go for it. And I think even though Diamond Skin are having, I guess, a rough start, I think they're actually pretty good. They have a lot of potential. Um, they obviously took a win. I think it was over Liquid, right? Yeah, I think it was Liquid. Yeah, That's really good. Um, I think if they can avoid Crucible, it would be a huge achievement for them uh, to start off. But yeah, I'm really happy with Rob. And he grinds a lot. He's like me. He's really motivated. When you put it I, that so, way... Go ahead. Go ahead. I think a question I have about Diamond Skin, actually, is... Did uh, Robert Derber get to try out at all for Diamond Skin? No, I he know didn't. He was still in A and Z. Yeah, he was delayed because he was waiting for his visa. And I think, from what I heard, is that Diamond Skin tried out like a lot of people, um, a lot of I guess new players or veterans, um, and then they decided that they wanted something fresh and to take a risk, and to like invest in Rob. And then they asked him. And I think they said that they were happy with his performance at BlizzCon, uh, past BlizzCon. And that was one of the main reasons why they thought he was good enough. Okay. 
I mean, the win over Liquid is big, but talk about a hard weekend for Liquid. You know, or a hard couple of weekends, yeah. right? They're, you know, middle of the pack still. Not in any, uh, not in a terrible situation by any means, right? It's tied 3-2 with you guys. Um, but HGC EU, I guess we're kind of doing the HGC discussion first this week, boys, because it just makes sense because that's where we are. Um, but the 3-0 win there, and they did get the win on Friday over Tricked. Uh, Tricked hasn't been looking as hot as they could be. Upcoming matches, though, they still have to play Fnatic and Dig. And uh, that's that's a toughie because those teams are performing as expected. Yeah, I think people were definitely respecting Liquid a lot and thinking they were very strong this season and going to push for the uh, fourth or third spot. So, to be honest, I'm pretty surprised that they've dropped games that I don't think they should have because they've been looking really good in scrims. Yeah, that, that's actually something I want to talk about more. It's like Liquid... <clears throat> Um, a lot of people were thinking this team is in the running for second. They're in the same league as Method, Fnatic, and or, or Method and Fnatic. But the performance in HCC is definitely not justified that so far. Like the loss to Diamonds game week two, um, the super close series with Zealots, um, like where it looked like Zealots had won, where Zealots haven't been competitive with a lot of the other teams around the middle of the table. Um, I mean, they'd be fanatic, but they lost to Trek and they lost to you guys as well. So, yeah. like, do you think they can recover? Like, do you think they're it's just going to take some time, and by week five they're going to be really strong and like be up there, or do you think it's that ship has sailed? I think they can recover, but I think it might be difficult and it might take some time. And I think that because obviously they've had a really rough week where they've lost to uh, uh, Method and. Oh, wait, no, they beat Tricked, didn't they? Yeah, they, but they, so they lost every early game. Yeah, so they had, had a really rough series. <clears throat> um, so I think they've had a rough weekend, and next weekend they're going up against Fnatic and Dig, which is going to be... Well, firstly, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for them to beat Dig. Um, I don't think they should expect to win that set. And then against Fnatic, I think they can definitely try and win it, but I don't think it's going to be easy. So, because they've had that rough weekend just come, and the next weekend's going to look like really difficult, I don't think it's going to be easy for them mentally. It depends how well they deal with it, and going into week five, how they approach their play day. Because especially, it's so close to the clash as well. If they have uh, issues in the team, it's going to have a huge impact on their performance, because I think... Uh, whilst I haven't had that much experience at LANs, I think your performance at a LAN is very impactful to the team's mentality. If you do badly, I think it can be pretty grim for the rest of the more well, the next five weeks that you'll play. Are you yeah. are you thankful that you got to play Dig and Fnatic early in the season so that you can just kind of have those out of the way and focus on your other matchups? Uh, it's hard to say. I think there's benefits and... Uh, disadvantages of it obviously the benefit is you get the difficult matches out of the way and if you're having a bad week like early on it's fine it's uh, not a huge loss if you don't beat Dignitas but at the same time I think if we had versed Fnatic at uh, a later date either this week or next week I think we could have done a lot better because mm. I think we're starting to gain momentum and get really good as a team yeah like he especially Swimpy looks so uh, so comfortable like this week compared to some of the earlier weeks. Like, because I know he also took on drafting, so he's got to learn that. A Pharaoh's shot calling for the first time in a while as well. So I think you guys have a lot of stuff that's going to ramp up over time. So I, I think that's accurate. And like, while we're on the subject of scheduling being like, uh, like a bit unfair, possibly, I think also Liquid got really unlucky with playing Fnatic and Dig um, on the same week because we're looking at like arguably the top two teams uh at least on standings at least on what we've seen so far these are the top two teams in europe and they do not get to practice against them like while they're preparing for the matchup so they, they can't still start some dick they can't still start some fanatic like and they have to play both of them very close to each other so i think that's actually really unlucky for them yeah it was the same for us i think Recently, our scrims, when we were screaming Fnatic and Dig, we learned so much, and it just mm -hmm. feels like insanely good practice. And then I just remember that week when leading up to Dig and Fnatic, 
our sets against them. The practice just felt very off and it didn't feel like we were learning enough. You gotta learn. Gotta yeah. get learned. I, I've been there. It, it sucks, especially if like some of the other teams are having issues like those weeks or like someone's on holiday for that week. It's just like, oh no, like... Yeah, well, um, I mean, I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see how things continue forward. I mean, Diamond Skin and Zealot's definitely a step behind. Leftover is pretty much out of the running 0-4 right now in a hard position for them. You know, they made it through the Crucible, but after that, it's been a rough run for them. And that third spot, I mean, we're what? How many weeks until the Western Clash? Four or five? It's Four? four weeks i think it's four yeah it's not too far away so um that'll be decided three and a bit three and a bit yeah exactly so there's before the western clash there's what two more weeks of regular play yep so there's this weekend and then the next and then yeah that's it the teams that go will obviously have their boot camps so even just looking at you versus liquid as potentially being that third team for europe liquid has fanatic and dig that is incredibly difficult, and you guys are currently tied up. Uh, your matchups are, what is it, Tricked and... Tricked and Leftovers. Tricked and Leftovers. Leftover. I mean, I'd say you guys are in a pretty good spot based on that logic, right? So, could go, any, anything can happen, right? But um, that's definitely a tough, tough situation for Team Liquid to be here in uh, the first part of Phase 1. Uh, looking at North America, just kind of speaking about it. I mean, it's still we still have an undefeated team, which I think is impressive. Team Freedom with Lutano, that that new player that is, you know, I say new player, but he did come from the Open Division last year, has just been uh, working out really nicely for them and looking very strong. Heroes Hearth got the upset on Team 12. Uh, I, I personally was not expecting that to happen. I, I expected good things out of Heroes Hearth, but to make that upset, I think it was a 3-1 in their favor. Um, yeah, it was. Which is, uh, you know, the team, they look like a team, right? Heroes Hearth actually look like a five stack. They don't look like five players that are under the same brand. They're on the same page. They seem to work well together. They seem to be motivating each other. Uh, it's weird to, like, think of Arthlon being motivated, right? You know, two hours of practice was his was his meme. <laughs> and that, that's, that's fine and all, but, like, it, he lo it looks like he's motivated to play the game again. And maybe that break was what he needed, or maybe it's just he's he gets along and meshes well with that team. Um, but there's a lot of potential between uh, be, behind Heroes Hearth here. Uh, Simplicity starting to fall a little bit behind. They were middle of the pack. They're now starting to just kind of fade away uh, towards the the lower half. Actually, not quite into Crucible territory, but tied up with LFM one and three this season. So I I think. Um... Simplicity is actually in kind of a fine position. So they've played Tempo Storm, Team 12, um, and GFE. They played GFE week one, and honestly, it looked like they almost uh, could have got the win. It was very close. It went all the way to five games. Um, if it was 3-2 them, I don't think anyone would be surprised. <coughs> um, they quite handily beat Space Station, and they threw a lot of the games they play against Team 12. Like, So... I mean, maybe in the standings right now, they're not looking great, but I think they're pretty handily above LFM and Space Station right now in terms of actual skill. And since they already beat Space Station, if they pick up the win against um, LFM, then I think they should be comfortably out of relegation. No, that's true. I think you're right. Space Station and, and LFM are definitely looking like the Crucible teams based on the first few weeks. I mean, uh, something just isn't clicking with Space Station, right? I think there's a lot of a lot of talented players on that team and a lot of potential. They brought in Jeshute from uh, South America, or and uh, just it isn't it isn't meshing. It's not working. Something something's wrong there, right? It's they they really just don't look strong right now. I mean, the, uh, especially the unfortunate thing with Space Station is their next two matchups are Team Twelve and Team Freedom, and realistically, that's not a matchup that I don't think many people are going to be predicting them to win. So. They need to pull out an upset to have a chance to not end up in Crucible, in my opinion. And e even yep. if they win both of those, they still might be in, so. Yeah. 
That's a... Uh... It's a tough path. They've had multiple role swaps in that team, right? Yeah, I mean, Thompson used to be an assassin. He's been playing support since he was on Neventic, so he's been there. Um... Was in a... Is Equinox or Casanova the tank? So, I, I, I think Equinox... I Like, it, it's weird, so... Hmm... I don't know exactly what's going on, but Casanova at some point was the tank, then he was the melee, and then I think Jason at some point I played tanks, I, kept seeing, I want to yeah. say. But, but I, I, he never has stuff. before. Like, yeah, so. Equinox always kind of been like... <laughs> he's never been one role. He's always been like, I'm a tank, <laughs> I'm a Kerrigan, cool I'm a... I'm a... Yeah, I mean, he's, that's just kind of his history as a player. And... I'm not surprised to see the fluctuations happening, but do you think that's a problem? You think they just got to set it and like commit? Mm, it's hard to say because I think there definitely is a situation that occurs when you form a roster that it just simply doesn't click and no matter how hard you try or how long you stick it together, it just won't work. And I think this might be a situation where it occurs. I, I kind of feel the same way. Like I, I don't agree with the moves they made in the off season. Um, like compared to some of the things I heard, I think they could have done a lot better. And the end result, I'm not happy with. Um, so, yeah, results it's speak tough. for themselves, right? And at the end of the day, that's what we can see is a, a struggling team right now in North America. Um, it, it is good to point out, you know, chat was just saying the crucible isn't isn't immediate or anything, right? There's, yeah. there's several it's weeks after the after the mid season. Oh, I, brawl, I think the issue is, is if you end one and six, then the chance to climb out of crucible is pretty unlikely at that point. Um, like it, it's a tough climb because, like, so there's going to be upsets happening. So let's say Heroes are Simplicity or Girl Force, so, like, the competitors, right? Um, like, they're going to upset each other. At least one of them is going to have an upset on one of the higher, like, ranked teams. And you need to win all three of those matchups or, like, matchups against the higher placed teams to overtake them because you started at such a disadvantage. Yeah. It's true. It's tough, though. It's, uh... Oh, there's always hope, though. You know, there's many weeks left in the season of Phase 1. Phase 1 is still early in the grand scheme of things. Um, but we at least have our front runners, And it's nice to see Team Freedom being consistent. You know, I wasn't too sure if they were going to mm -hmm. be able to hold on to, uh, you know, 4-0 this long, right? That's, that's a big deal. Their recent wins. I mean, LFM, that's to be expected. They, it was a close series with, with Tempo. Um, but they still have Team 12 to face, and I think that'll be a really good matchup when it comes down to it before we go to the midseason brawl. And that's a big match for Team 12 when you think about it as well, because, you know, they're they're currently going to be fighting, uh, basically, with Heroes Hearth for that second-place spot. It's looking like Tempo and, temp tempo and Freedom, likely for MSB, because we've got two more weeks of games. Uh, after that, Gale Forest, I think, still technically is in the running. I don't know that Simplicity can make it. Uh, I, I know can. the maths around Europe. I don't know the maths around yeah, NA. Yeah. Um, so, so I, no, I want to say they can still make it. Um, so, wait, what's the matchup against Heroes Hearth? So they have to play Heroes Hearth, and they have to play LFM. Yeah. They, they so, so Hearth, they they lose head to head to GFE. So GFE has to end up on four losses, and Simplicity have to win the rest of their games. And they need Hero's Heart um, to lose or win. It doesn't matter. They'd then be tied for fourth, potentially, with Hero's Heart, or they'd be direct fourth with Hero's Heart and GFE tied for fifth. Hmm. So they, they can still mathematically make it. I'd say it's looking most likely it's Hero's Heart at this yeah, point. Yeah, I would agree. It's, I mean, if Hero's Heart beats Simplicity, I think they're pretty much guaranteed. Um and then after that, I mean, it, they're placing Simplicity and GFE, so it could, a lot can happen. A lot can happen when you consider that. Uh, but it'll be fun to see. I mean, midseason brawl about a month away. Uh, once again, the first uh, Western Clash is not mid -season, I keep saying midseason brawl. Western Clash. The first Western Clash is going to be uh, at IEM Katowice. 
uh, just like last year. So that will be cool. I mean, it's a huge, huge, huge gaming event. Um, I was there last year and just getting to see the StarCraft stage and uh, just the whole scope of the event. I didn't get to go into the CSGO area. That was apparently apparently unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, like the, the so at IEM, they have an expo, like IEM Expo, which is this huge hall. Uh, like there's some games there, but there's a lot of promotions. There's a lot of just like celebrating gaming. Yeah, um, sponsor you're like your standard yeah. convention, basically. And then if you go like down a tunnel, you go into the big Spodek Arena, which is this twenty to thirty thousand seater huge arena, um, which conveniently has a, a bit of a weird shape, and that makes it a fantastic shape for esports because uh, they they get like a I want to say it's something like two hundred and twenty degrees of crowd, and they have screens that can support that, and like you can still see the states even in that two ten degrees. Oh. It's like really great. It's put on. Probably the best arena I've ever been into in esports. Wow, well, yeah, I'm sad I didn't go in last year then. Um, <laughs> but no, it's a, it's a cool event for sure. And like you said, you know, there's just a lot of celebrating of gaming, a lot of just cool stuff. And it's not like Gamescom is. If if you're European and you've ever been to a Gamescom, it is monster. It's just it's too big. Like trying to get to one yeah, side agreed. to the next, it is exhausting. Like it There's is just people everywhere. It's just like, too the corridor. Big. It's like a fight. Like yeah, like I, it's an awesome event for sure. But like, oh man, it's like just thinking about it makes me tired. Um, this is <laughs> this is much more manageable. I feel and. Uh, Katowice is a nice city. I, I enjoyed it. Then again, my I have Polish heritage, so maybe I'm biased. Um, but, you know, after that, you know, HCC, we'll, we'll be keeping eyes on. I think I, I did not watch Korea this week, as usual, because I just simply do not have the time. But isn't Tempest still undefeated? Uh, yeah. Tempest is 4-0, I want to say. Uh, but they're 15-2 in games. Okay, so they've dropped a few games. Maybe 5-0? They're five 15, and 15 and 2, and they're 5 and 0. Oh. Uh, and that means they've beaten both KSV Black and Ballistics based on their schedule, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. So, so, so beat... they're like almost a locked in first seed. Even if they drop a series yeah. to some randoms, I don't think they still tie break over KSV. Yeah. So. Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Unexpected. But um, sweet. Well, I just, uh, you know, that was our HCC segment. We did it first because it just made wait, wait, sense. Wait, wait. Just quickly, I yep. want to say, Sign right now is my best player in the world. Really? I, yeah, I was thinking about this on my stream the other day. So, like, who's the best player in the world, Arcana? Because I don't think it's Ritz right now, and I don't think it's Reset right now. They're both super mechanically good, but I feel like the mistakes and the positioning has been kind of a bit off recently. Like, especially in that Tempest series. So in my running was TTST, who I still thought was really good. But I was like, wait, Sign is actually amazing. I haven't had a look at all of his games to know specifically. Like I've seen like a lot of his really good plays in team fights, but I don't know how he plays in the early game and mid game because mm. um, I've sort of skimmed through the VODs. But I think I'd probably put Wabi as the best player in the world at the moment. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down for that. I was looking mainly at Korea, to be honest, but I am down for Wubby. It just feels like... So pretty much my main goal is to like be as good as Wubby, or at least contend with him. Mm. And to me, when I look at Wubby, I play against him in scrims and in HGC, it feels like it's going to take forever. He's at <laughs> such a level where... Yeah. It's not just his mechanics, and uh, it's like his decision making and knowledge it's insane damn that's the re that's respect right there that was just straight respect in the purest <laughs> form possible he wants to be like him and he's a pro gamer already wubby the praise uh i dig it man um obviously uh, you guys should definitely check out hgc minute the new minute ish long video that they've been putting out on the heroes esports channel highly suggest you you subscribe the most recent one was almost three minutes dude it was unbelievable okay. yeah well <laughs> you know three minutes well spent three minutes well spent hgc minute has a nice ring to it not hgc minute ish it doesn't have a ring to it <laughs> hgc uh, minutes 
there's a lot of content to cover because they do go over the four major regions and then some they even uh shouted out the the winners of the first two open division teams and um you know just to shout that out open division has been a blast for north america already we're seeing a lot of players that maybe got that lost their teams in, in hcc last year form new teams and i i hate it because all the teams are just acronym names it's like xd versus na lol versus smv and i think that's very hard to to market and remember it's like wait which one was that team on i struggle with it a little bit myself already but you know we've got tiger jk prismaticism iacona a lot of these players back uh playing in open division and it's looking it's looking pretty darn good so far we have a we have um smv and xd being the teams to watch for but if you're interested in open division go to heroeshype.com that's for north america and europe you can learn how to play you can find out information about when to watch and all the good stuff it's uh it's been it's been a blast so far shifting we're going backwards on the list here we went to hgc first and then we're going to patch then to mayev wait then... what no, we didn't do that. Do my have now? I'm so excited. Nope, nope. You're gonna, what? You're, you're, what are you doing to me, just, Jake? Just because you really want to see me, yeah, you get to look at this dog instead. Ooh. That makes the weirdest noise when it mounts up, dude. I was trying to work. So there's some weird noises in my game. I was trying to work out what it was. It's when it mounts up, it does some weird yipping thing. I love the mount. <laughs> I don't have it yet. I haven't seen it yet. That yeah, Kelfast uh, skin is super expectation versus reality, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> like, it looks so bad compared to the art. I, I, when, whenever I see the Sylvanas, I'm like, that's not Sylvanas. Only the movement with the cape makes me think Sylvanas in-game. Oh my god, I haven't played this Brawl yet. This looks ridiculous. It looks so fun, dude. I haven't played it either, by the way, but it looks really fun. Arcane I don't think it's out Brawl. yet, right? <laughs> oh, maybe it's Thursday. Yeah, it's not that yet. Okay. Dude, the Zul'jin skin. It's the only one I've gotten, and it's the only one I want. His hair is like, so big. Look at that Kel'Thas splash, dude. I mean, and then, like, is. and then go back in the video and compare to it to when he turns around. Like, it's it's a big change. A, a bit before. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, Jake. Versus... Not even close. <laughs> That's a man I'd bring home for dinner. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, Lunar Festival has begun. Mayev has come out. We'll talk about Mayev soon, but just because Bakery really wants to talk about, excuse me, Mayev. Mayev. I need to train myself. It's not Mayev, it's Mayev. Um, I've been saying Mayev for like 15 years. I've just been wrong. Mayev. Mayev. My, we all got practice. I know My I'm end. wrong. I just got. I just gotta shake off 15 years of bad. It's tough, actually. I'm, how I'm only 29. I gotta shake off 29 years of bad. Um, patch notes. Gray main. We talked about this last week. Uh, they didn't change anything. Uh, Bakery, you said you know, this is kind of a, a nerf because they they took out the additional splash damage, even though it do, is getting some baseline buffs. But on top of that, actually, is this the PTR patch? Because I don't see the other changes. Are you looking at the right changes? I thought they nerfed his Q as well. This is January 29th, so this is not not right. I, I mean, this is PTR patch the patch notes. on the yeah, that, that's the PTR. website. That's PTR. Here we go. All right, take two. No voice chat yet. No voice chat yet. We knew that though. We knew that going into this. Um, Genji did get some changes. Dragonblade got got uh, nerfed at, at ten and at twenty. Um, I don't think that's really going to change Genji at all, though, right? I don't think um, it's going to have that much of an effect. Yeah, pretty much. I agree with that. Like. I, I want them to figure out how to nerf Genji, dude, because... So it's like an 8% damage nerf in Dragon Blade. Nobody really cares. And then, again, nerfing the Dragon Becomes Me at 20. It's still, uh, like, a really strong talent. Uh, it's, it's not infinite anymore. Good news. But we, we missed the target info panel, by the way. If you click on things, then you, uh. can, um, you can see them. And there were quite a few art changes. Um... 
so they did like visual effects and like circles and stuff around um abilities with weird particle effects so, so something like false stab laser uh, if you maybe want to hop in five minute jake like yeah, false stab laser I'm on it. it was super misleading like you're talking about hit hit blast no one calls it laser the laser on false stab as i was saying you can call uh, it shock it, and awe but you can't call it laser <laughs> It now displays like uh, like something on the ground that shows how wide it is. It's pretty cool. I'll show you how wide. I it think is. Diablo does the same. I want to say Li Ming's spells look slightly different as well. So you're talking about just that? The you said circles, but you're talking about the the indicator. Oh, just just like a on the ground indicator. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, like indicator. A, a lot of the spells are circles. Yeah, that uh, looks Jake, really nice. You're not help. showing screen though. You should God probably. Damn it! Production is so hard today. <laughs> yeah, that thing. So that was pretty nice. I looks like good. these changes. Yeah, looks good. I mean, just helps. No, you know the players know whether they're in or out of the line. Uh, you mentioned the little indicator. We talked about this a little bit last week, but it's really nice. Um, just being able to get some info on whatever I think the one want. thing I am annoyed about is, so I click on Diablo, I want to know his souls, for example. Like I agree. There's, there's just no like unique hero things that show. So may maybe it's, if there's a little cutaway, like slightly below, it's like another row, and it's hero specific, and there's three more or six more items. I mean, uh, like slightly different background color to show it's hero specific. Like, I, you know, blue I is on your team, orange on the enemy. I personally will probably mostly look at armor when I look at this panel, you know, more than anything else, just like how much armor does this guy have, like, or whatever. Um, but I, yeah, I think armor is the big thing. Right. But I agree. Souls would be nice. But honestly, they don't even show souls right here. You know, there's a lot of uh, yeah, baseline. Trait, I know. And I, that's valuable for a teammate, right? You know, I always have to tell my team, I don't have souls. I only have 30 souls right now. Please do not fight. Like... You know, at level 16, because I died during a big fight or something, and having that info um, built into this default quest, even on the tab screen, I think would be a big uh, bonus, and hopefully we get that in a future patch. But Arcaner, uh, any info you you want? What's the? Are you going to utilize this little info panel a lot? And if so, is there anything that you wish was there? Uh. I don't think I'll use it that much. Only if I'm curious about like health pools or just general stats. Um, I was thinking maybe they could do it for the Harker too, for his essence. But at the same time, I think that could be bad because it's uh, I think it's strategy in knowing if someone has essence or like if you take a trade against yeah, the Harker and he uses way. essence, it's like I don't think you should know what essence is at 30 seconds later. So. Okay. But I think there was some other thing that I really wanted to know, but uh, I can't remember. I'll bring it up if I remember. I mean, Genji's auto damage doesn't show. Like, I, I think the bug might be anyone with multiple attacks. It doesn't show the auto damage. Yep. Um, hmm. I guess yeah, Tracer okay. Bomb is something that really needs to be fixed. As in, like, they need to show Tracer Bomb percentage more accurately. <coughs> Especially in Observer Mode. There's it's a lot there. of HGC yeah. stuff that I want like to be changed. Like I mean, HGC is visible, quests. but it's just not. It doesn't draw attention to it. But it's it is there. Oh or just no! Something so... as simple as like Kelthizard stacks, or yeah. like you know the quests that appear, uh, like Nat stacks on like the side. Like bomb is ready, yeah, leader. and the notification. Yeah, they should they should be in the UI for HGC observing. I I think I maybe I was dreaming. I think they announced that they were gonna add the like. The quest feed and like the kill feed to HCC. Like, didn't that happen? Did anyone else remember that? Or am I insane? I, I thought they mentioned it, but I know. It's, see, the confusing thing is like Aliobs has it, and I used Aliobs before this season, like an all, right, on okay. all my streams. So I was used to having it. So I stopped paying attention to the Blizzobs because I think Blizzobs is still a little bit behind, a lot of bit behind actually. Um, but I've ranted about that enough, so we don't have to talk about that. Let's keep going they, with the patch notes. They, they added quest and kill feed, apparently. In the obs? In this patch? 
No, like like a previous pass, definitely. Oh, like, uh, oh no, yeah, no. What ago, am I thinking? So. It, it, yes, <laughs> it is showing the quest completion in 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 my my game that I'm casting. So, but yeah. it it probably could show stacks. I I mean, right now, but like it, it's really fascinating for me. The entire HTC Observer interface is built on like tons of old mechanics. Yeah, stuff no, makes it's... every single patch like. There's stuff that just doesn't overwrite itself properly. It's not layered properly. Like it's pretty clear. It's it's quite a neglected interface, even though it is the official one in the game. Like anyone who opens a replay sees this interface. It just draws over itself. It doesn't have to put things colored Dude. properly. It no longer like does the brand guidelines like properly. For, for over like, a year, it wasn't the, sure, the mistakes in it. The stuff on the top wasn't centered for over a year. Yeah, like it was. I had a. I made graphics and overlays for it, and I had to move everything over two pixels. Like, but last night I encountered the weirdest bug with it when we were casting Open Division, actually, and I had never seen this in all my years of Heroes, and I have no idea what caused this to happen. Uh, a player did disconnect, and I don't know if I had to do something with it. But anyways, typically what we do if we have an observer is we do what we call camera locking or camera slaving, where mm. the camera will follow uh, a second observer, and that's what creates that nice smoothing effect that everybody likes to see that you see in the normal HC broadcast. We have a guy named Argy who works with HeroSight that was our observer and normally you press o but if o doesn't work l is the other hotkey again it's really confusing i don't know why there's a second hotkey for locking your camera um but o wouldn't do anything so i press l thinking okay l has, will, will fix my, my life just goes to a basically a program part of the map where it's just like we're looking at the blue team. So the first like couple of minutes of the game where it's like, we're looking at the blue base now. I would, I, I just kept trying. I'm like, why won't this work? Then I accidentally, no, I, not even accidentally. I clicked on a hero and the camera locked them. And it was just like, we're on a Rainer vision. And it wouldn't let me break out of his box. It was like, I was locked <laughs> onto Rainer. I'm like, what is happening? And then I got locked to a minion. And until that minion died, I could not leave his, his face. So like, or his area. So like, there's a lot of, like you said, a lot of, almost like old data that's kind mm, of been yeah. buried in there and somehow i did something to break everything and eventually i i managed i, I had to take my hand off the keyboard so i wouldn't press any keys I, I literally observed like this one hand behind my back and i can't see that but one hand behind my back and just observing because it would not lock to our observer that game last night so yeah anyways that's a a big so... upgrade to finish that whole story, the positive uh, of this, because there are a lot of downsides, but the positive is that hopefully, because it's all breaking and it's not being fixed, there's a new Observer interface. It's coming soon. It's going to be in time for Western Clash, and it's going to be so good to watch that tournament, dude. I'm going to have so much fun oh, watching it. I had, new that, I had that exact mentality, like, oh, they'll have for BlizzCon, it's going to be great. And then the, the mid-season <laughs> brawl before that, I said, oh, they'll have it for mid-season brawl, and it's going to be great. <laughs> Blizzard, your interface is bad. You know it's bad. <laughs> Let's fix it. But anyway, patch notes. <laughs> patch notes. Um, Gray Mizzle. I got oh, some wait, wait. Um, so the ranked battle rotation for maps hasn't changed. It still remains locked to the HCC uh, map pool. And it hasn't changed the past two patches. So that is a fantastic sign. We might actually have the ACC rotation as our ranked rotation. And also, they buffed Volskaya. If you scroll up slightly, Jake, you'll see the battleground changes. The Triglav Protector is now an absolute beast in the early game. and still catastrophically weak late game. But, dude, that first one, he gets like a double kill in every game I've played so far. And I love the healing pulse change. I haven't actually seen it or played it yet because I haven't played much the the new patch. But just conceptually, um, I, I've seen so many games where people just do not get proper value out of their healing pack item. Um, it, it, it incentivizes people clumping to to benefit from the heal, being treating it like a turret. actual counterplay as well. I think it's the big yeah. thing for me. Yeah, that too, because you can actually just nullify it. But I think as a as a totem essentially that you throw down. Uh, it's way more intriguing as an item. I agree. I, li I like the change as well. Yeah. Um, so, Arcana, what do you think about Volskaya as a map? Because some people uh, have been telling me, some pro players, they were like, actually, Volskaya is kind of fine. Like, we don't mind it. We can end games in not ridiculous times, unlike NA. 
other people, especially in NA, just screaming, oh my god, this map's so broken, it's horrible, every game goes to 30 minutes. Like, where, where do you lie? Okay, now what's your thoughts? Um, I'm a bit in between. I think the duration, like, of the games, it's like you can play around it, you can end games kind of early. Um, the thing that I don't like about it the most is it feels like in between objectives and even before objectives because it's like three minutes of doing nothing really uh the camps don't offer anything on in terms of pushing or on the map and i think that's a big problem i have with the map so i think buffs to the tree guy would be good and yeah i haven't played on it i haven't played on the new force guy so i need to test it and see if i like it better but it's probably one of my least favorite maps at the moment in the hgc map pool so if I'm not mistaken, after, I don't know if it was week one or week two of HEC North America, we had teams complaining that the map objectives weren't powerful enough because the game went really long and it just created some long drawn out fights, yada yada, Trigger Love not getting a lot of value. Um, I forget which EU players they were called them out and just be like, no, just play smarter. You're dumb. <laughs> uh, but we're seeing the changes regardless. And from my experience, just in Hero League, obviously a very different beast, but still a big part of the game. People get the trigger off protector and they just have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea how to get value out of it. And more often than less, they just don't feel impactful. Even at 20 minutes into the game, the, tr the trigger off protector is like, I killed the keep tower. Yay. And that ends up being the result. So I'm glad to see them, them tweaking numbers in this map, but I still hate that bottom point more than, more than I hate Donald Trump and, that's yep. saying something. I, I don't mind the bottom point too much because a, a lot of people just say, nope, we're not fighting on the point, we're going to fight in the lane instead. Like, And no one wants... It's like a gentleman's agreement. Like, yeah. In my game so far, every time it's like the enemy team turns up, they stand in the lane, and then we go up to the lane to meet them if we're on the side. Like, oh, the enemy comes like up to us. Nobody wants to go down there and just have like some weird clown fiesta going on. So... Um, what I will say about Triglav is I think the numbers are just completely wrong uh, in terms of tuning. Like, I think the first Triglav is now absolutely insane. Every time I've seen it, it takes the full four. It gets between really? two and four kills. Like, I, I've seen five games of it. I've never seen it not get two kills. Like, when you take it. This thing is insane, like the first one right now. And people are going to play better and actually run away, and it's not going to get a double kill, but still probably going to get, like, a four, possibly one kill. But, like, the, the scaling is still terrible. Like, you can leave a Triglav completely alone, and it will take the keep wall, and it will take, like, 30% of the keep, or, like, 60% of the keep. And and this is at, like, 16 minutes. This is insanity. Leave a DK who caught, like, in that time. Like, Wow. I, I just think, like, nerf the early game, like, right now, I, I like the fact that there's buffs for two in there, that's smart, uh, but nerf the early game back down and then increase the scaling of everything quite dramatically. Uh, because I do think when you hit 30, like, 30 minutes, if someone gets a triglav and the core is open and it's 5v5, 100% game, in my opinion. Like, or, like, 90% game. But it seems like now it's, like, 60% game, which I think is way too low. Yeah. No, that's beef. Beastly. But I do like the incentive to have two people in there, right? Because you're, like you said, that's really smart. Um, mm -hmm. You're pulling two, two kits out of your team. Uh, you want that to feel meaningful for this objective as well. It's an objective you fought over and won. It should feel powerful, but maybe it's just a little bit too powerful. Um, I haven't played it yet. Arcaner hasn't played it yet. Obviously, you've been seeing... <laughs> early early powerhouse trig lab and that started the game i'm excited for that i'm excited for that that means i can draft for the early game on volskaya and try to slay nerds and feel good about my life um we're going to continue with the with the the patch notes here down to the gray main we knew that he was getting some changes in the ptr but we didn't know that he was actually getting some some damage reductions as well the gilnane cocktail has less damage uh baseline and it also has less damage on his razor swipe so they're just taking away a little bit of dps and clear from his kit the gilnane cocktail did get the buffs hand quotes on the uh, mana cost and the uh, increased splash but of course he has lost draft, draft uh, draft overflow at four 
and perfect aim um, refund is a little bit less. So it's a little bit less. They're trying to get rid of Q-Build, basically, right? That's what they're doing, but they're also nerfing him the process. Uh, however, having some, I mean, Arcana, how do you feel about Greymane and the other options that now exist for him with Draft Overflow gone and the nerf to Perfect Aim? I think, firstly, the nerfs are good to his wave clear. I think that was a big uh, strength to the air in the early game, and that's what made him so easy to pick early. Um, so that's good. And then I think the removal of the Qtana 4, it's fine, and the adjustments to the uh, spell baseline is fine. Um, but I think we could probably see more of a auto attack build coming out with uh, the new Wise and Jewelus or Wizen Jewelus. So uh, have you got a chance to play with yeah. it yet, Arkina? Uh, I have not. H have you, like, have your team played it or anyone? Yeah, like... my teammates played it. And... I can hear a league, my teammate. But uh, it seemed pretty strong. I think it's probably going to be the same sort of strength in game, but probably less, uh, I guess, versatility as a hero to be drafted early. Like on team, you could just draft it and you have great wave clear and on shrines, whatever. Like you don't want to sort of draft it for Q build anymore, which it felt like that was the case a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. I, I think my main question about Wizard Duelist is how long is it going to take to actually get that like fully stacked? Like, do you think it's even possible to fully stack that in a game? <clears throat> I think... I don't think it's like you go to pick the talent just so you can fully stack it. I think mm. it's like going to get a lot of value. And I think you'll probably have most games around level 13 people are hovering at like, I don't know, 60% stacks. And I think it's going to get a lot of value then. But I think I really like the talent actually. I think it's going to reward players that uh, are aggressive and can trade well. Yeah, at like, the same like time, I, not dying. I, I said the same last week. Is like the. the... The thing is, it's a linear talent. Once you complete it, that's the same as going from 0 to 1% as going to 29 to 30. Like, there's no bonuses or anything like that. Uh, so the benefit isn't from getting 30%, because I don't think you're going to ever finish it, honestly, in a game. Uh, like, the ceiling's so high. But, like, again, rewarding that aggressive player, I think, super cool. And even just getting 15%, still super value. Um, I can't wait for this patch to be live on HCC, so we can start comparing, like how quickly different gaming players are getting that to acceptable levels and like let's say 10 minutes like what's everyone stacks that like if this is the picked one which i hope it is yep i am sure i think it's it, it going to be a go ahead i was just going to say i think it was going to be a map dependent talent as well i don't think it's going to be strong in a map like sky temple huh yeah uh i mean obviously It'll be fun to see what people can do with it, how far they can ramp it up. You know, obviously some compositions will be punished more um, than others if Worgen form can get away with a lot, if there's not a lot of CC or something. I mean, especially with, you know, Tyrael being a, a prominent pick right now. Uh, yeah, he can drop those shields all day. And if you're running lone uh, tank Tyrael, you don't have as much CC, generally speaking. So maybe the Grey Man can get away with a lot more DPS. But it is a level seven talent and that's that's early enough to to consider just ramping up for that kind of quest progress akin to just the you know the the Gilman cocktail quest you begin your journey early so i think it'll be an interesting interesting option at least i mean i'm glad that level seven becomes okay you go q build for the cocktail or you go wizard duelist for the worgen form uh, essentially, right? Because it's going to give you... That's where a lot of the additional... The triple benefit is, is huge. But you lose half total, right? Whatever your total is. If you're at 50, you got a 25, right? When you die. That's a big deal. That's a huge, huge drop-off. Is that too harsh? Or is it just right? I think it's a good number to start with. Okay. And then, like, uh, I think... Also, I think it's fine, and it probably will be a balanced talent. Um, but also, with Q build, I don't think you even need to take the Q at 1 anymore. You're saving 15 mana, whereas yeah, before I... pre-patch, you're saving half your mana. I don't think many people will. I think they'll probably spec into the W with yep. one of the other two talents. 
Um, yeah, well, Q build officially not a thing anymore. Hopefully, just, I mean, Blizzard's goal is always more diversity and talent options and talent picks. And I think they will definitely achieve that with these changes to Greymane. Uh, the nerf to the clear, I don't think will kill him by any means. So he's still going to be a very good hero, right? Yep. Yeah. Cool. Well, good changes then. If they're nerfing an OP hero that's seeing pretty much first rotation picks and bans and constant prioritization across the board, something has to happen to that hero. And this is not over dramatic but hanzo getting a lot of changes as well never outmatched the cooldown reduction is brought down to 2.5 seconds the sharpened arrowheads has been brought down from four to two but yeah you know, now you can stack that 10 times instead of five so theoretically you can still ramp it up to 20 it just takes twice the amount of auto attacks so redemption is going to be a necessity for that kind of play and then the armor reduction duration has been reduced from four to three seconds um pretty substantial you know nerfs on hanzo at level seven um obviously He's really good. So it's not a surprise to see some nerfs happening. Where do you think this puts him in the the grand scheme bakery? From a selfish perspective, I'm really upset they nerfed never outmatched. Like, oh man, that time was so fun. Like it was so fun, Jake. So busted, um, dude. Yeah, so but I'm actually glad uh from a game perspective they did nerf it because it was pretty busted. Um recognizing as well uh, this Probably my favorite, or my favorite changes from the patch. Recognizing, okay, if we nerf shop an hour ahead to this, then everyone's just going to pick nerf that match, just like they were right before we introduced this talent. So nerf that one as well. Uh, the Q-Bird one probably still needs some buffs, to be honest, but uh, it's really not a great talent. Um, but definitely a lot more balanced on this tier. I'm really glad shop an hour ahead is nerfed, but I hate the overall design of the talent i think it was rushed um did not feel clairvoyant or like much thought had gone into it to be honest so i i hope it's just at this point it's just not starting enough to be picked and i'm not going to see it arcaner i hate about sharper narrow heads i think the changes are good and he deserved enough and i think this is a pretty severe nerf which is warranted so i'm pretty happy um but I'm actually pretty confused on what you should go now. Because I don't actually like the idea of how the armor reduction works now. Where it takes so long to stack and doesn't last that long. Mm. I mean, I think it's still good against heroes like Diablo, maybe, and like Stitches. Yeah. Which I think it kind of should be. But, like, hopefully it's much worse against people that actually try to get out and, like, backline cats and stuff like that. Yeah. Sharpened arrowheads never outmatched in the dragon hungers. Yeah, that's not an interesting talent. So it does make his level seven kind of weird. And I, I wonder if that will. I mean, sharpened arrowheads, I feel like it's still just going to be the go to for a map that doesn't have a lot of PVE opportunities. But never outmatched, that is a significant nerf. Um, but it's, you know, if, if you're specking into the serrated arrows at four, you're you're still going to be able to get a lot of value out of never at match for you know boss rates it sure he's going to be a little bit worse on boe he's still going to be able to provide a lot of very safe pressure onto the immortal as well in that kind of case so um i don't think this kills hanzo by any means he's still going to be a popular and uh relevant pick in the the meta right yeah i think so yeah. i'm actually really happy now that they've nerfed genji and Hanzo. Also, I think Genji's still really good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hanzo is definitely so. dropping in priority. And it's going to be a bit more interesting for the viewers to... I think people aren't going to be so inclined to be banning Hanzo every game. Well, I don't no, know. they have to ban uh, my app instead. Yeah. <laughs> and we're <laughs> getting there. <laughs> so we already talked about the mouth fail rework. The only changes from the PTR to live is Reaper of Souls. Bonus duration has been increased from one to two seconds. Here, Tick Guns will now reset the duration instead of increasing it by four seconds. Arcaner, what are your thoughts on the mouth fail rework? Well, first, I've never really liked the hero at all. Uh, it's probably one of my least favorite heroes in my all role. All three of us, all three of us don't like but, uh, playing mouth the hell. <laughs> um, I actually, I don't like the changes. Huh. And the reason why I don't like it is because uh, 
I feel like his ults are really awkward now. So like the way they've reworked it makes it easier to sort of spread your trait with your auto attacks and your E because they the E is such a wide width now. Mm -hmm. Um but now like I don't know, it feels awkward with Tormented Souls, not only do you, do you not get the armor from it, but it's like in a lot of situations in team fights, you're already gonna have your passive on people if you W win. So I think it's still going to be definitely the ultra pick, but it's just a bit awkward now, the play style of the hero in team fights, because before like you would sort of go in and ult, and you either create so much space or you have so much space to work with, and uh, like the whole sort of team fight strength of the hero was his ult. And I don't think that's necessarily the case anymore. I actually think last rights is going to become the play. I think last right. rights. I'm upset. I'm upset about last rights. <laughs> Like, so, earlier today, okay, I was playing Diablo, and I'm not even kidding, this guy, this Maltho, he chases me down, dude. He's like, pops that movement speed talent, he's got a Lucio speed boost him as well. Like, he chases me down, okay, he cast this, like, global range last night, and it kills me from, like, 46%, which I'm pretty sure is a bug, because it's not supposed to do that. I'm so upset about this earlier, I'm even posting a link in the chat. As playing uh, Diablo, dude, look how much damage it did. I'm at like 46. It's just. Like, I don't even know. I, I was laughing that you put it on me and then I died. Like. A anyway, put carry on your civilized discussion. Oh, that's pretty funny. The only thing with Last Rites, I think it's like. Firstly, the hero has always been awkward and competitive <laughs> because. Like, he wins all of his matchups in lane, and he's, like, good at solo laning, but, like, he can't push structures. He can't really roam and sort of pressure around the map. Mm. Or, and he can't collapse very well. He doesn't have CC or utility. Uh, so then, like, if you take last rights, it's like when you're roaming around or, like, you're starting to teamfight, it's just, like, I don't know. It just feels awkward to be looking for, like, a sort of a one-shot on someone as that hero that kind of wants to go in and create space. He almost becomes yeah. like he's almost like a Zeratul though. He's um, he's macroing. He's roaming around. He's got on a pale horse for the roam. He's hunting people down. He's last hunting. night, like uh, just doing, like, I like how map, it's like... one six 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 damage. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Like, that, that's why I made a gif. I had to capture that. I think they definitely need to like in the future just remove the ult and give him a new one. I really hate that ult. Yeah. What last night? Yeah. Yeah, I I'm, I don't disagree. Um, the one thing I will say, I I, I think Tormented Soul still has a place. And I think Last Rites now has a place. Whether it should is a different matter. But So last week I was talking um, about how if he can still solo lane, then he's probably going to be really strong. And I thought that, you know, against heroes like Sonya and um, like Leoric the Hacker, stuff like that, maybe he might get bodied. Well, from my testing today, I can confirm that Maltho literally destroyed all three of those lanes and, like, took the wall solo. Uh, so I don't know what was going on. It, you know, we are talking Team League here, like, so plat players, like, diamond players, not high level. But it looks like he's a really strong laner still. And the reason is, is every every time they trade him, he auto attacks the wave twice and then spams Q and keeps going backwards and forth and just heals to four in a matter of like, I want to say like six seconds just on the wave. Yeah, it's really good for his laning because before the floor in his laning was if he's used E on the wave, mm -hmm. you can sort of trade it with him afterwards once the trade's not on the minions and you can get a good trade. But and then also his E costs a lot of mana, and if you like get a good trade against him and he's O and he uses E and he was up, like he's gonna um himself pretty quickly. So now that like he can put his trade through auto attacks, it could definitely be a big uh, buff for him in the lane. But still he has the issue of not being able to push structures or roam and pressure other sides of the map. Yeah. Like uh, him winning matchups was never a problem. So even if he wins him even harder, I don't think it changes that much about him as a solo laner. I think Battlefield is probably really strong right now. Yeah. So they got stronger. But um yeah. yeah, I completely agree. Like picking him on other maps is always a risk. Like we had this same as on Dig dude when, when we had Martha and we're like, guys, okay, we, we got him. I think we can go for like keep or call. It's like Zayla's like, I'm playing Martha. It's like, oh damn it, like <laughs> come on off. It's depressing. 
Like a lot of the time when my <laughs> team's pushing, like a structure, and I'm there, a lot of the time I just rotate out because I don't bring any damage to the push. I'm just going to rotate and do something else. Hmm. Mouth ale. Dead to me. Always been dead to me, though. You know, I actually he... hate Mio. He makes yeah. me want to cry when I play him, dude. Yeah, like, I yeah. just, I, mine's level 5. I got him to 5 just to be ready for Hero League in case I desperately need him for some odd reason in which I would lose that game. Um, Morales, another hero that I don't like very much personally. Wait, this... You scroll past the. I know I did. I'm well aware. We're going to get to her last. We're holding her until the end of the show just for you, Bakery. Uh, Medic, uh, I don't play a lot of her. I assume this is really just for quality of life so you don't accidentally W a minion. Well, it's actually, I mean, it's, it's honestly a nerf. Like, it's yeah. not going to be that impactful, but so putting W on, let's say, an easy camp while pushing bot lane and Dragonshire, um, putting it on, like, the the mage minion for the knights, like, that was a legitimate tactic, um, especially when you were, like, ahead of talent two or something. So it's honestly a very small, very minor nerf, but probably better that... Like some of the more casual players aren't clicking on minions and just like twelve second cooldown and then so Yeah. I mean, small change. Tyrael has been honestly looking very strong ever since the rework. Um they tried to buff the other level one talents instead of the I can't remember the name of it. Shields for all is what I call it. <laughs> Justice for all. Justice for all. Okay. Close enough. Should just replace any word with justice and material talent, and you're good. Uh, so justice for all has been insanely impactful uh, as a talent. Just the way that it affects everything, you know, the minions and the, the team, uh, and they're trying to level out the other talents. I think justice for all might be too strong personally, but um, probably needs to turn up to AT at least, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. And then they nerf stalwart angel, which I think is totally justified. But yep. How do you feel about the new Tyrael overall, Arcaner? Have you scrimmed much with this patch yeah. for the PTR? It's stiff. Yeah, it's a really strong hero at the moment in competitive. And I really like it, actually. I like the playstyle. So, like uh, before, the old Tyrael, um, I guess with Reciprocate, you'd still like shield your team and then go in. But um, I've always liked the playstyle where like, you shield your team, you go and you smite, and then you shield your team. Like that sort of poke playstyle is a melee. I really like it. And I like how his uh, builds, like, there's so much diversity in what you can build. There's the W build with um, Law and Order, which people are taking mm -hmm. in yep. at least EU. Yeah, it's, and, yeah. And, we're seeing both, yeah, in, uh, in a 13, 16, the mix-ups. Yep, and then you also have the option, if you want, to go into Holy Ground. So, I sort of like the diversity. I don't really like the Holy Ground build. Um... It's it's cool to think that Holy Ground is potentially not optimal, right? It's always just been default. You need Holy Ground. That's going to give Tyrael the, the beta. But I'm I'm so glad that we have Law and Order as a talent that is challenging that. Um, just out of curiosity, in your games though, if you see Law and Order, is it always Smite the Wicked with it? I think it should be. Yeah. Always. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I think the reason why Holy Ground isn't so good anymore is firstly. They got rid of the cooldown reduction on Q at four, yep. which was a big part mm -hmm. of the playstyle. Um, and then obviously it's three seconds, not four. And I think you have to take kind of an awkward build if you want to go that talent. So Herodic um, reforging at sixteen is just not worth it, right? Too late. So if you go That's... holy ground, you usually want to go the cooldown reduction at sixteen. Horodric. But you're just saying they took it out at four. This isn't enough to, to mitigate the, the impact. Because, I mean, having Holy Ground at 13 seems like a really nice thing, right? Might be a little bit weaker, but it seems really nice to have. Then you get Herodric at 16. I would imagine that's pretty similar to the old impact of Holy Ground. It's mainly like the playstyle that you want to have as Tyrael now is you always want to be like with your team. Yeah. And like in team fights, you're shooting everyone with like the huge shields and like you kind of want to be with your sort of backline for Sank as well. Like, he's more of a supportive, sort of frontline, so sort of he's less supporting of a, tank. Less of a bruiser dive. More yeah, before you used to sort tank. of shoot your team. Yeah. And you're completely ham on backline and pressure them and create space. Uh, but now it's kind of like, you're more of a hybrid. Yeah. Um, so, how much do you think the level 1 
affects this entire playstyle. Because one of the coolest things about this rework for me is that they gave him a solo lane talent, they gave him a like team support tank talent, and then they gave him a dive tank talent at level one, like three different play styles. If people like, let's say they just removed Justice for All, it's just no longer pickable. Do you think people would still try and go for the Law and Order? And do you think no. you'd still play that backline, or would it just be back to Holy Ground all the time? Back to sort of like, I uh, yeah, I think definitely Holy Ground play store after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the same, definitely. Hmm. But, so, uh, interesting how they're going to balance that, because I think there's great pot potential here. Like, this actual diversity, like, actual fun talents to play with, like, I just hope they get right. I think uh, the way they need to sort of balance it is buff Obviously, the other talents like Salvation and uh, Smite Heal at 4. Like, I think that's a really interesting talent. These sorts of talents that are really good for solo laning, uh, I think are really good. Uh, maybe a good change to Justice for All is they only make it on heroes, because it's really good for solo laning now, because you just shield the minions and you like prevent like so much of the wave clear of your opponent. So I think... Yeah, like, especially the hacker. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah, so if they made it only on heroics like increase then you'd sort of see people wanting to pick more of a holy ground playstyle if they want to be stronger at solo laning they'd pick salvation and smite heal whatever yeah makes sense but i mean at the end of the day i, I still feel that the reworks on Tyrael and malfurion have been some of the most successful that we've ever seen in the game they feel really good they feel like there's options that exist you know compelling Ma mouse options. questionable <laughs> really I feel like there's still a lot of people who don't get new mouth, and to, to me, I like so. It's like the League of Legends philosophy of we're going to remove this old hero and we're going to bring a new one in. Um, like the mouth is still very closely related, but it's definitely a completely different playstyle. He's, he's a different hero, yeah. And for me, that was fine because I think his old playstyle was boring, and generic, and the new one's completely unique and for me very interesting. But they need to be careful. It's it's a very fine line. I think right now they're they're at the tip, but they can fall very quickly if they stay like either side. I mean, but yeah. I I'd say in terms of introducing a variety in terms of his talent options and everything, they've done a good job with with his his build overall, right? I see good good you know variety at one, even level four. You know, some people are actually still the way that they change the roots to not affect the minion wave. Sometimes you want to grab that Trent to have some kind of pve value i see it happen and it's it's interesting like even in you know the open division like top like iacona has played with the trent before if i'm not mistaken which is surprising to me because i look at deep roots as like just a consistent better talent that's always going to have uh, a greater impact but he will keep taking stangling lines it, it it upsets me i think it's a real <laughs> trap talent like oh the, every the healing ACC reduction game i watch it i make it a point i make it a point to count how many times that talent gets value yeah. and it's zero most of the time and it, sometimes it's one it's like one q like it's just because so frequently roots are used defensively and not aggressively right if you're running with a stitches composition maybe maybe that's a good talent um I, but it's i don't know it's interesting though uh regardless <laughs> Uh, I've been enjoying those reworks myself, but the, that's what we have for the patch. Is there anything else in here that's juicy? I never read this end of the patch stuff. I'm too lazy. Uh, it's just like clacks and bug fixes. Yeah. Unless there's a big bug fix I'm like hoping for and looking for, um, I tend to... So Oreo got stealth nerfed. Um, but I just want to make like a PSA, okay? Early on stream, I claimed uh, if Oreo was intensely nerfed, like they thought Oreo was too strong and they need to nerf her, I would donate $1,000 to charity. I'm going to stand by that. Uh, so if Blizzard ever officially comment, they, have, they intensely nerfed Oreo, uh, $1,000 to charity. I'll post confirmation or whatever. Um, but what actually happened is they fixed a bug in this patch where Oreo was gaining... Uh, too little energy or less energy than she was supposed to uh, from her crown. Wait, is Jake. I think the we're. Cool I mean, we're dropping frames, but we're here. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Panic! Panic! <sighs> uh, 
I don't know. My internet sucks. We're still live theoretically, but Xplit didn't crash. Let me look at my bandwidth usage. Bet you my wife's doing something dumb. AK uploading. Hella shit. Traffic analyzer. Are we live? Are we dingling? All right. I think you make an interesting point about reworking heroes and being careful about it in terms of changing the playstyle. Because like when I played Smite, they did that a lot with uh, sort of champions that I really enjoyed, and then they changed it and felt like a completely different champion. Mm. And they consistently did it over and over again. I think it was every patch they were doing it, and it just like completely ruined interest. Yeah, that, like leagues is the same thing, but like. Most of the time, because they have so many heroes, some of the heroes end up with like 1% popularity. So when they rework them, it's a very small subset of people that are annoyed. But it's still people that are annoyed. Like, I know I was very upset about Zerath changes, and I was very upset about Karma. Like, a lot of the other reworks I could get behind, but Zerath and Karma, like, were not cool. Well, I wish internet in America sucked less shit because <laughs> we are, I mean, if my wife does anything, the internet just can't exist in my house. And we're currently a radio show. Fortunately, this is a podcast. Individual elements are all a bonus. So we're podcasts now. You guys can still hear us. That's what matters. Sorry if it looks like, you know, a slideshow, but Wait, can, can they hear us? They can hear us. They can hear us, yeah. The way it usually works is it's just not be able to encode the, the video high enough. But uh, fortunately, this is a podcast to begin with, so that is totally fine. I will literally make you guys look at the logo. That's how hardcore I'm going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Mayev is the new hero, and I have played a total of two games, I think, maybe three with her. Uh, Mayev. Mayev. My Sharona, my Ev. That's how I'm going to get get that right. Um, she seems pretty busted. She's got like a 60-plus win rate uh, on the the uh, ladder. Oh, and one other thing to point out before we go into my Ev, uh, stream was, or chat was pointing out the fact that Sonia has apparently had her Q nerfs revoked. Probably incorrectly, because there's no mention of the patch, but her points yeah, and no, spear... So the, the oil and the Sonya stuff must be a bug, is what I'm saying. That's why I was going to donate 1,000 if it was an actual nerf. Like, it must be a bug. If it's not a bug, right $1,000 is charity. A anyway, I, I guess we're just chilling now, okay? No? You know, it's just us two. <laughs> it's just us two and the people in chat. So have you played many uh, My Eve games? I haven't played it at all, actually. Um, uh, do you think she's your role? No, I think it's like Shrimpy's role. Okay. Definitely isn't a solo laner, I don't think. It's like, uh, honestly, it's just like a stronger Cassia, it seems. Really? That doesn't have the weaknesses of Cassia. Okay. Yeah, I, I kind of see it like Kerrigan in a way as well. Yeah. And yeah. Swimpy did literally destroy kids on Kerrigan. I'm pretty sure some of the other players were crying after those games. So. It's pretty funny, actually. The first time <laughs> after that, it was just completely grief. And uh, he was really struggling. And <laughs> for some reason, he's just like playing godly on it recently. <laughs> yeah, she yeah, definitely played seems... Kerrigan. He played Kerrigan for us in 2015, and he was griefing so hard, dude. Like, he did it for Fnatic in 2016 as well, and he did the same thing. It's funny this year, he still did it after all these years. <laughs> like, he, he really just... likes the hero, I think. <laughs> Alright, well, I think our internet is stable now, at least, so that's a plus. Um, sorry about the difficulties there, fam. But, yeah, um, Maiev, did you guys start talking about her? No. No, no, yeah. No. Where's okay. for you, Jake? Oh, so kind, so kind. She seems pretty ridiculous um, uh, in terms of her kit and what she brings to the table. 
She definitely feels like a bruiser, not an assassin, but still an assassin. We There's a clip from Fan on Reddit, if you check Reddit right now, where, you know, he shows off her base kit Dragon Blade, getting the resets by hitting her Fan of Knives on two targets, where it just literally annihilates, I think, a Blaze and a Nova, in a, you know, with, with, with the ease of pressing Q consistently while the targets are side by side. And uh, I will say, though, I'm really happy they brought her armor down to 10 from 15 from the PTR. I think uh, that was a a, a good a good start. <laughs> not... What? No, I, I mean, so so here's the thing. Is if they didn't change it, then I'd be like, okay, well, they're still looking. They're still working on something. But the fact that they did make a change to me was like, oh, they now think this is okay, like, as it goes to life. No, no, it's not okay. Uh, so, just for some background, guys, right now, uh, my Ev is sitting at a 65.2% win rate on hot stocks. Um, so, Zul is the highest ever recorded, I believe, who hit 68% on the first pass, but actually corrected back down uh, to 59% before the week later patch. Um, my Ev is... Initially, I was want to say it was at 62, jumped very quickly to 65, and has been fluctuating between that and 66 over the first two days of her release. So she seems pretty stable at this point, at 65% win rate. Part of it is people learning how to play against a hero, of course. Um, I think she gets away with a lot, though. I mean, Arcaner, what are your thoughts on her kit? I think her kit's really cool. Uh, looks like a lot of fun to play, and I really want to test her and stuff, but I think her numbers seem way overtuned. Damage, health, everything? Uh, mainly her damage, I think. I think it's fine if she has good survivability. It's just like it m makes it seem like ridiculous how tanky she is when she deals so much damage. So I think if they... I think they should probably patch that pretty quickly, her damage. Because her Q damage seems completely wrong. I don't know why it does that much damage. <laughs> well, okay, so, so one more stat from Hot Slugs, by the way. Her Masters win, win rate across 80 games played is 76.3%. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I'm, I'm honestly right now thinking, I hope Blizzard is in the office preparing a Zarya-style hotfix. Because this is insane. Like, she just wins every game. She does insane damage. She's insanely tanky. She literally cannot die. Um, it seems like something's got to change in fast, man. Like, if they're not going to patch her quickly, they should definitely ban her from ranked. Yes, agreed. Agreed. Definitely. She's that busted. She is that, She's that busted. busted. Well, I mean, I mean, here's the insane thing as well, is that Zul was only that high win rate because he would literally just go to a minion wave, spawn six skeletons, they would run down the wave, and when the skeletons expired, they would kill the tower because they had that talent 30 and it made it do like 100% extra damage, so like 150 extra to towers. Um, so that's why Zul was broken. Zul would win every game just through PvE. Right. But... But that's not my Ev. My Ev literally just kills people and then wins the game. That's all she does. She doesn't even push or anything. Like, she literally just slays in, like, 1v4 situations. Like, she's absolutely insane. Seems good. I mean, handle it, Genji and Hanzo. Move over. We got my Ev now. Easy. I, I mean, so, I've always been a strong believer that when you move an ability from a basic ability to a trait, the cooldown penalty should sit, in my opinion, at around, I want to say, like two times. Uh, it should be double the cooldown. So like 30 seconds. Uh, so, for example, if you put this D on her E, and it would be 8, which I still think, by the way, is overtuned, oh, yeah. um, I would have it at 10. Then if oh. you move it to her D button, I would double the cooldown. And in the past, I'm talking, going back to heroes like Johanna, you know, cool down on that D, 20 seconds. That sounds reasonable. Um, going all the way back, you know, here is like uh, Tassadar. You know, if he had that on a, like, if he had his D on a, a button, like he did in Alpha, they doubled the cooldown when he moved it to his trait. B 
been pretty consistent across the years. Well, Genji was the first one to break that. Uh, Hanzo went back to the old system again. Hanzo's jump cooldown was 20 seconds. And now Maev breaks it again. So honestly, get that cooldown up to 20 seconds. I have no idea what it's doing this low. It has no right to be 8 seconds. It feels like they really wanted it to be a part of a kit. The like the sort of invulnerability frames. I think uh, that's what breaks her. I think the kit flows yeah. so well already, and then like that is like a button that, in my opinion, is once per team fight, and it's happening two or three times. It's like feels insane. Yeah. Here's here's that fan clip. If you missed it, now Nova does kind of dingle and just stand there like a dingle, but. See how fast they died, and that's only enabled by hitting two heroes with the Q. But still, imagine any team fight where you have any kind of CC, a Johanna, whatever, where the Condemn pulls them in and you're able to consistently get two or three Qs off. That damage is monster. I think the more insane thing to me is if you replay the clip, Jake, like from the start, uh, so you can see he starts this before he gets stunned at like. 70%. He's now going to get stunned like by Blaze, you know? Like, Nova's here, like, she has snipe and everything, and no he just damage. takes, like, no damage. <laughs> like, 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 you know, he goes from, like, 70% to 50%, like, and then just kills both of them from, like, both at 80. It's like, what's going on? Like... I just love... So, I love tanky. fans' He's response damaged, in that video, but... though. He's just, like... He's, like mad that he just killed them both he's like i literally just pressed q i did nothing <laughs> he's like why is this happening uh good stuff good stuff um yeah she seems pretty busted and i think everybody agrees that she is going to and needs to see nerfs um but her kit is amazing it's super fun to play against assuming it's tuned it's super fun to watch it's super fun to play as conceptually her design is phenomenal i mean you said it yourself arcana you haven't played her yet you haven't had time you're focused on hgc she's not in play but you look at her kit and you're like hell yeah this is cool yep i want to roll swap <laughs> <laughs> i want to play these fun heroes do it man do it uh, so again to reiterate i think her kit design is actually fantastic so I, cool. I love her kit design so cool. It's fun to play against. I'm not getting that frustrated, even though she does have a 70% win rate. When compared to hers, like Li Ming and Tracer, I had nowhere near as much fun. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like, she is obviously insane, but I think a really well designed kit. Get the numbers right, and this is a fantastic hero, in my opinion. Yeah. Yep. And. Well done by Blizzard. She seems legit as hell. Um, I, obviously, I'm... Well done, Blizzard. I, wow. 65% win rate. <laughs> I'm not saying she's tuned properly. I'm saying the core design of her kit is really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so, well done, Blizzard. Maybe maybe a longer PTR or something. <laughs> I don't know next time. Yes. Yes, definitely something needs to change. But... Uh, I still think her addition to the game is going to be dope. Once she is tuned, I, I, I agree with you. Her trait, Vault of the Wardens, is just way too powerful. I'm glad they nerfed the armor for 15 to 10 uh, because, again, she doesn't look like she's easy to kill to begin with. She already has great mobility options, more options than most, considering that she can. it's not predictable. She can go whenever she likes. It's like Haunting Wave on crack. Uh, and it's just, it's really, really quite powerful. And she brings interrupt. She brings uh, cr crowd control in terms of her heroic abilities. She brings tons of DPS. Like what doesn't she bring? She brings solo, soloing potential theoretically. Uh, the fact that she can uh, probably not, probably not. Okay. Well, if, if, you, if you're desperate and she has to sit in a lane while someone grabs a camp, she could do it right. Not for the whole game. But to cover and, and maintain, she has solid clear, and she has the ability to juke big abilities. I think My the issue yeah. when when heroes are this overtuned, it's kind of hard to see what their weaknesses are. Yeah, I, I think she is able to be kited. Yeah. yeah, but like people are still playing so badly around her. Like, so you see, my 
my Ev, and you think my Ev's going to come, uh, he's, he's going to come for our team. Like, you literally need to split up enough that her cleave on her auto will not tether you. That's all you need to do. Like, um, like, you see where her is going. Okay, everyone get away from that point. Like, leave one person, like the tank there if you have to, you know? Like, you can play around her so much better than how people are right now. Yep. Baker, is this your skill? Still your go-to skin? I haven't played it yet. Okay. I unlocked um, one loot box after my, first, my level one oh, loot box. Oh, that looks and so I, cool as well. Yeah, the Darnass it's got the Darnassus logo too. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, when I got it from that first loot box, I was like, okay, well, it's faded. This is mine. This one's cool too, but um, nah, uh, I have no bad. interest in the, this skin. Like, I mean, it's it's a good skin, you know. Like just, I said last week, if that was Raynor, I'd be like, yes. Yeah. But you know, it's it's my ass. Like her model is already awesome. Like she yeah. didn't need any skins. Like I'm the guy that rocks the warden to Ronda because I like the warden look. I think it's badass. And um, well, my yeah. Cool, man. Well, that is Maya. Obviously, it's going to be a while before we see her in HGC. In fact, the, the other patch changes, do you know, Arcaner, when those are going to go live? I mean, the, the Grey Main Hanzo nerfs and stuff, at least from, for Western Clash, but do you know if it'll be sooner than that? I think week five is Maya, yeah. Maya and okay. it's Balance Patch week four, which is this week. Oh, wait, is it Maya? Week five? It could be either way. I hope it is. It's That's either the... my week five or my for Western Clash. Mm -hmm. One of the two. Hopefully, but, yeah, week I... five. I definitely like it uh, when we do play like updated patches, because I think probably the worst thing is when we're scrimming and it's on an old patch and we have like all these sort of like old design heroes like Raymi and stuff. Like I want to be able to test that stuff now. I, Actually, I think the main it... reason, main reason is skins. I want to play the new skins on tournament realm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think probably one of the main issues as a viewer as well is just like when you know something's broken and it got crushingly nerfed and it's still okay and stuff like that, and then you tune into HCC and they're still playing the thing that's like broken. Like <clears throat> it takes so much away. Like whenever they do a cool thing, you know, like. Whenever the enemy team like kills them, it, it's just so much less interesting to watch when yeah, you know that it's getting changed. True. It's absolutely awful when you're playing against Hanzo and Hero League, like the new one, and it's not really doing that much. Then you go back on tournament for yeah, scrims, yeah. and do you just like, see the oh, negative? Oh god, why? <laughs> like minus twenty, dude. People are gonna be spamming minus twenty again in HCC like this week. Yeah, one more week of minus twenty. Raise your shield, dongers. Well. Regardless, steps forward with the balance on those heroes. Um, I'm sure we'll see continued changes on Tyrael, you know, being reworked. He seems very powerful with his new kit and Maiev. Cla clearly, uh, something is going to end up changing with her and her DPS and her kit in general. Uh, number of tweaks, but her kit is dope as fuzzsicles. We're going to go to the shout outs, man. Arcaner, thank you so much for joining us, dude. I'm so glad to see you not only shift to EU, but see a lot of success, be part of a brand like Method. And it's going to be an exciting year. Where can everyone else learn how to follow you? Thank you very much. Well, firstly, uh, shout outs to you guys for inviting me onto the show. Uh, it's been a blast. And um, my Twitter is at ArcanerHots. Um, I stream on Twitch regularly. Uh, at Arcana underscore on Twitch. And also shout out to my sponsors, Method. They've been really great to work with so far, and I'm really proud to work with them. And also to Aztec Entertainment, who are my sponsor for my streaming. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Azassin, my boy. A gentleman and a scholar with Aztec Gaming. <laughs> bake a -ri. Yes. That's him. That's my name, don't wear it out. Um, anyway, so shout outs to Tim Dignitas, obviously. Uh, shout outs to all of you guys for watching. Thanks to Arcana uh, for coming on the show, dude. It was a great time. Um, so, Dig today announced we have a new CSGO team. And, um, like, I know some people are really disappointed because there were rumors of we had a lot of teams flying around, like, 
a lot of big names, but we've picked up uh, the XO gaming lineup. So it's an NA based team. Um, really new people to the scene. Like one of the players we picked up that's connected to the team is only 15. Um, <clears throat> so like w when he gets the chance to play, that should be super exciting. But the reason I'm excited um, is actually because this represents like the start of a a resurgence of the Team Dignitas talent development process. So with this team, they're the first one we're going to be really putting a lot of effort into. We're going to work on like taking this team and making them one of the better teams.